Hey everybody, Andy here, helping you build a career you love on a Thursday. If you're here with me live, great to have you. I've got a wonderful talk, I think, on how to build a job search marketing plan. So if you are here with me live, get in the chat, say hi, let me know who you are, what you need, put some question marks in front of your questions, because after I go through the teaching portion of today, we're gonna go into a healthy q and I've also got a mega, mega giveaway for those who are here with me live, so you're not gonna wanna miss this one. It's a gift. So great to have you. And I am always trying to think about different ways to share with you concepts that will move you forward, catapult you forward, unlock you if you're stuck, give you different ways of thinking about, about things, better ways to get clear on what you want, who you want to be, all that great stuff. Because it's very confusing because a lot of times we want to skip to the middle part, look for companies, look for roles, submit our resumes, and it's just not a great way to go. So what, what, what happened recently is I'm working on my fourth book. Uh, it's a leadership book about building skills that'll make you a superstar. That's not the title, but that's what the book is. And Friday, last Friday, if you're here with me live, this is in September. Uh, what's the date? The 29th. So end of last week, I submitted my book proposal, which was all of 30 pages. So I had to write a book proposal about writing a book so that I could pitch my ideas to agents and publishers and, and, and people of that nature that ultimately help facilitate you bringing the book to life so that people could actually buy it. And so as I was going through this exercise, I had to put all this information together. It really forced me to get centered and clear on what the book was about, who I was ultimately writing it for, because I write it for you, not for me. Uh, and, 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 and I had to go through a lot of things, and I thought, this is exactly what uh, my job seekers, those in my community who are looking for a new job, need to do, and a different way of looking at it that I think will, will really help you. So I wanna go through that today. So I'm gonna give you the how-to. I think there's about seven or eight steps we're gonna go through of things that I want you to do and how I want you to think about each step and how it's gonna help you throughout your entire job search, where you get started, how you move through and market yourself, to whom you market yourself, how you do that, what your resume needs to entail, what you wanna do in the interview. So we're gonna take you through all of that good stuff. So to get started, let me actually show you. I thought it might be fun to show you the inside of of the book proposal. And before there's just a table of contents. And but before I do that, I always like to think so now that you know what today's all about, I always like to say hi, Henry, Michael. Let's see who else is here. Michael's got some questions. Fox Fox, Deborah, Kurt, Cherry, my baby girl, Donna, my boot camper, Michael Moore from the right coast, Stephen Green, Gilles, and everybody else. So great to have you. Thanks again, as always, for spending some time with me. All right, so let's take a look at the inside of what this, this is a table of contents. And one of the things that you can see, I want you to take this in, because I want you to think in these terms, because this is not just a job seeking lesson. This is about life. This is how life works, people. And so I had, to, I had to think about this book that I wanted to write, and they wanted a book title, and I had a number of different versions of this title with different kinds of themes. That's not overly important for our discussion today, but I had that. There was a concept of what the book is going to be about. But when you start to get into some things that are much more analogous to you, we start with the concept because the concept I had to encapsulate in 50 words or less what this was about, right? What was the hook? Why would anybody wanna really read this? And what conceptually, how would you describe this? Distill it down. What's gonna be an 80,000 word book or something like that? And then there's these, these special features. These are things that are special about the book, but in terms of you, I want you to be thinking about what are my special features? And I'm gonna give you a formula to how to unlock what those are, no matter who you are, whether you're a recent college graduate or you're a CEO or anybody in between. But you had to think about that. And then they, obviously they wanted to see a table of contents, so they need to know that structurally there's, there's some substance there of what the book's about. And then here's where I had to get into my resume and the short bio, long bio. They wanted to see all of these things that, that let them know that I am somebody that is worth their time because they are going to be paying to put my book in, in, in let my book breathe and put it in, put it into this world. Can you actually help us 
Are you somebody we can market? Are you somebody that people will like, buy from? And by the way, I want to see how you've done this in the past. So I had to give them my resume. Sound familiar? What makes you qualified? So I want you to think about that. And then, well, what's the need for this book? Now, now, for the last several weeks, I have been on a rampage about you thinking about problems that companies have or that particular roles solve. But what's the need for the book? Why is this necessary? And not only why is it necessary, but who are you writing it for? The who for you is what kind of companies am I going to be supporting? What kind of groups? What, what kind of customers maybe? But for me, I literally had to think through the business owner who might need this book, the, the coaches that would might need this book, the Co recent college graduate who's who wants to is is into self help is into professional development but is not sure how to go through building those skills what to build when which pay more dividends early on and what compound and so on or I'm a mid level manager and I can't seem to get over the hump or I'm a career changer and I want to know well how do I make that pivot faster this book feeds all of those different individuals, but I had to think long and hard. I literally had to think about what the pain was that they were going through. Why would this be of interest to them? And then, well, is there competition? Your competition is other individuals. My competition is other books like this. There aren't any, but there is a market for books like this book. So I have to investigate that and show that there's a demand. You need to know, is there demand? So then it turns into more about, well, Andy, well, tell me how you've done this before. How have you moved your book? What makes us believe that you will actually be able to do this? This is like somebody asking you in a job interview, well, what is your what is your uh, background in doing this? We need to know that if we're going to pay to bring this book to life, that you're going to help us sell it because we don't want to take a bath financially. Where have you done this before? How have you done this before? Or if you haven't done this before, so I want you to imagine. I had to write all of this, right? I had to, I had to write my interview responses, so to speak. And while many of them would say, well, a book proposal is for the offer. Effectively, a book proposal is to sell your book and your ideas just like you were selling your screenplay or anything else. And then, and then what? How many times have you y'all heard me say, well, okay, that's great about how you did it in the past, but how are you going to do it in the future? So, Andy, you're going to write this book that isn't written yet, and we're going to pay to have you do that. What are you going to do when it's released? What are you going to do before it's released? What are you going to do when it's released? What are you going to do after it's been released a while? How are we going to market you to different kind of buyers that would be interested in this or people who'd want you to speak and so on? And so all of this kind of stuff really immediately in my mind, it, it lit up the idea that this is exactly what you need to put together, not my table of contents. I'm gonna give you your table of contents today. So who's with me so far? And anybody out there writing a book? Well, that's what, that's what the 30 pages are gonna look like or, or, something, or something near abouts depending on, depending on what it is. Can I get a hey in the chat? Who's tracking with me? Who, who, sees, who sees the analogy here to what it is that you do? Maybe you're a seller or a marketer, but, but you're all, if you're listening to me and you need job seeking help right now, you're a seller, a marketer and seller of you. And this is what it's going to take. This is how I want you to think. So let's, let's take a shift. Let's take a shift into you and get into the here's how. So now, now what I want to, now what I want to do is I want to talk to you about how I would start to think about how to put my marketing plan together. Now, before I get into the, to the first step, I want to let you know this is all slightly different than what I've been teaching you. So when the first thing is we talk about your target buyer, which are the companies, and I always say, well, hey, I want you to put a target company list together. I want you to do that. That's a tactic. That's not a marketing plan or conceptualizing and really thinking about who it is you want to target, right? You can list them out. You can say, well, I want to go to a small company, big company, software company, or whatever. But I want you to actually take a step back. We're, we're, we're taking a step back on every layer of the job search today. First thing I want you to do, I don't want you to list target companies. 
I want you to identify your target market. Now your target market might be a little different depending on what your goals are. Let me be really clear. There's companies. Now, companies are, I'm changing jobs. I'm a salesperson I wanna sell at another company. I wanna know what the target companies might be, but I want to know what my avatar looks like, not what the specific companies look like, or, or not what specific companies I'm going to target, but what the avatar of the companies looks like. And then, or maybe it's different careers. I wanna change careers. And I was working with somebody last night Ernie, if you're here, man, loved it. Uh, he, he's making a switch from facility and ops management to property management. Okay, so he, he's evaluating the different career types within that, within that genre. And then there might be other people who are looking at different position possibilities. Y'all get hung up because you're looking at titles. Well, Andy, I, I'm not sure. I mean, there's this job or that job or this job, and you're trying to triangulate what the positions look like, and you're doing it from the outside in. And I don't want you to do that. In any case, whatever your goal is, I want you to take a step back, and I want you to write out the description of what it is that you are looking for based on what you can do, your desire, right? Available skills, desires going forward. What does that profile or avatar or whatever you wanna call it look like? Literally, I want you to take the time to do this, all right? It's a big company, it's a small company, it's a product company, it's a service company, right? It's national, it's international, it's whatever, okay? Whatever the parameters are, don't, cite the names of the companies, write your preferences of who ultimately you either want to work for, or if you're fairly flexible, that's okay, then what I want you to do is I want you to think about what you offer and who might be best to engage in, in with you to get, to get to seek your services, to your skills. Okay, so I want you to think about this. And you might be thinking, well, Annie, this is kind of a, you know, you know, exercise and is a way, it isn't a waste of time. What this is gonna do for you, number one, is it's gonna give you some, some really clear thoughts, clarity, whatever you wanna call it, on what it is you want. All right, now I wanna differentiate this from just coming up with a target company list because a target company list is a whole is a whole listing of potential organizations that could hire you, but I'm asking you to obsess over who specifically, what that what the personality looks like or the description of what it looks like. Believe me, I know this is going to sound weird to y'all, but when you start obsessing over this, it's kind of like, you know, when you think you need to buy new shoes and you're talking to your spouse and then all of a sudden you pick your phone and they're on the Instagram or the loafers that look really beautiful that slide right in front of you. I'm talking meta like that, right? Tell the universe, this is what I want to see. How many of you out there, show of hands, because I know you do this because I get this every day. My videos go out to at least once, two, sometimes three times on a given platform. And inevitably, a few times a day, somebody goes on and comments and says, Andy, how did you know I needed to hear this right now? Right? I don't know. The universe knows because you were thinking it and I was thinking about you. This is what I want you to do. I want you to get really, really clear. This is, this is going to help you get more centered and it's going to, as you take it into the next layer where you start building your target company list or building your position list or building your career, the different career profiles that you might want to, to, to undertake, it's going to become a lot more clear and then you're going to do some research and you're going to, you're going to massage this. And I want you to do it not just about the company, but I also, I also want you to do it about the role. Okay. I don't want you to use titles. Don't use titles. Bad, bad, right? Just general descriptions. I want a role where I work with customers, where I sell a service, where I can interact with them in meetings and in Zoom sessions, where I can triangulate what their business problem is, how my company's solution can, I want you to write it out. Because I want you to think about writing your own job description and don't put a title on it. Please do not put a title on it. Don't say I'm the director of this or I'm the manager of that or I'm the capo de capo of whatever. Don't do that. Okay, don't do that because you're going to start eliminating things that don't match. I want you to get into the details about what it looks like. Okay, this is going to be really helpful because when you start evaluating the roles and the companies, you're going to have a much better listing of what to go after and questions to ask to know that if the role actually entails what you want. Most of you do not do this. I would argue that 99% or more do not do this.
You don't engineer it this way. And if you do this, you're going to get more clear on, on what the role looks like. You're going to be loving it when you find the match and you're going to be, you're going to be in a much better position to ask the questions once you execute your marketing plan about does the role do this? How will I do that? How do you do that with your customers? What do those sessions look like? Do you have a methodology when I take a diagnostic to assess their business problems? Can I build one? Oh, wait, you don't have one? I can build you one. Money goes up, right? These kinds of things. But you won't know to do this if you don't have this. Okay, next thing. This is one of my faves. Problems, baby. Who doesn't love problems? Problems don't bother me. Randomness bothers me, right? One of my expressions. All right, what are the target problems that you solve and that you want? What are the challenges? What are the company's challenges? What are the position challenges that I want to work toward? So what do I solve and what do I want to work toward? Here's what I mean by this. You need to be really clear about what kind of problems that you want. And we all want problems. Okay, that's what we live for. We solve problems or we fulfill aspirations. That's it. That's all we do. If you say, and I love this one, Andy, I, uh, I'm looking for a challenging role. That's great. You're the Xerox guy? Beautiful. I got a role where you got to make 10,000 copies in a day. Isn't that challenging? It's going to be hard. You need to be efficient. You're going to be on your feet all day. Is that the kind of challenge you want? No. Andy, I'm a salesperson and I want to be challenged. Great. You're the salesperson and this role is so challenging because we don't have a marketing department and you get to market yourself and do all that research and your inbound, outbound calls. You're the field rep. It's a challenging role. Right. Well, that's not the kind of challenge I want. So you need to be clear on, I want these problems. I don't want these problems. And not only that, when you go and investigate companies, and I don't know who saw my 28 questions to be asking employers right now, I was harping on making sure that the employers know what problems they're working toward and do they have a plan to solve them. If you are interviewing with the Mile Walk Academy, here's what I want you to ask me as an example. Andy, what problems are you working toward? I am working toward more sales of my job search coaching program and my leadership coaching program. That's great. What's going to happen when you get more sales? How are you going to fulfill that? Okay, if I don't have a plan for that, then you're joining a company that's crappy. All right, so if you, if you are investigating employers, you need to know, my position does this. And with my position, I solve these problems. And the ones I would like to solve next because I would either want to enhance those skills or want to make sure I'm joining a company that's super great. Here's another example. If you're a salesperson for a company and you can sell the dickens out of that product, but your service team is for crap, then what? What's going to happen? You're going to lose customers. You're not going to get those easy renewals. You're not going to get those upsells because your services or your products are buggy because your engineers stink, right? Kind of thing. If you're not thinking about all this up front and what you're working toward and what you have maybe for skill sets to turn it into the next gear or toward the next problem, then you're not going to know how to investigate it. This is all part of the planning process. This is desk work. Okay, so what kind of target problems do you want? And then, and then what? How have I solved them already? Publisher wants to know, Andy, how are you going to make me money? How, okay, they make money because I sell more books. How am I going to sell more books? I need to show them promotions that I've run to sell, sell my book, move my book, or whatever it might be. Where have I done it specifically before? Andy, where have you specifically marketed a book that customers purchased and then went on to the Amazon and wrote the reviews and did all the stuff that's going to help us make this a New York Times bestseller, right? And you're going to, you know, we're going to have to hurry up and keep reprinting the dang thing because it's so great, right? Okay, wait, Andy, have you done anything analogous? Have you ever had to market something that was sold or do you have a community that you can reach out to where you've sold something to them or marketed it to them where they love you so that they will do this or whatever? 
right? Where are you as a project manager? We are looking to hire a project manager to do something in IT. We need to implement a CRM system. It needs to be enterprise wide. It needs to be global. It needs to be whatever. Have you done that specifically? Maybe then that's the problem that you want to market yourself in solving. But if you haven't done that exact thing, but you're looking at a PM position for an IT manager, project manager at a company, but it's a Salesforce automation system or some other function, but maybe it's analogous enough, you can talk about, well, it was a large scale IT project that I did. Right, these are things you think about in advance and what do you do? You put them together on your resume, which is like my book proposal, or a portion of it, right? Because you're gonna circulate that to organizations that you are targeting because they match what you want and they solve the problems or service the customers or their aspirations because that's what you do. And that's what you wanna do and that's what goes on the resume and that's what goes in the highlights section of your resume. You wanna match this as closely as possible. This unlocks a door very quickly to an interview. Speaking of, then think about an interview. Okay, well, what have you done? What have you solved before? Walk me through how you implemented that CRM system. Walk me through, Andy, how you moved your interview intervention book and you know put out uh, 200,000 copies in whatever format and this and that, right? How would you do it? We now are going to market your book. How will you do it with this new book in 2024 when it's released or whatever, right? now? Y'all are y'all are probably like, Andy, you know, you, I'm always struggling because, you know, you want me writing these resumes and I got to put numbers. I had, to, I had to go to my old publisher, my existing publisher. I was taking screenshots of sales numbers and other things and putting them inside my proposal to justify what, how, how well my book sells kind of thing. So, I mean, I get it. I had to answer all this. I had to do the same kind of things you people do. You would be, you would be surprised at how remarkably similar your life and my life are, even though you might be looking for a job and I'm running a business. Okay, so who's tracking with me here? Who's tracking, who's tracking with me here? You see what I'm saying, right? This helps you get your resume in order and it gives you your bread and butter problem solving story that aligns to what? The company you thought about that has the problems that you've already solved or you know how to solve. And then when you get into the interviews, you're going to talk about, here's how I have solved it, or here's, how, what does it sound like, right? Future, get them into the future. That publisher, I substantiated my background as a good bet. Your, your risk profile is low with me, right? But they also want to know that I have a plan and that I've thought through something. So I'm spending time now thinking about something that isn't going to happen until Father's Day 2024, right? You're thinking about something that you're hoping happens next week. Same process, okay? But you gotta get this in order, all right? Good, good. All right, next thing. Now you gotta go find the companies, right? How are you gonna do that? I'm only giving you a little here, just for completeness. Well, Mr. Google works, right? I had to go find publishers and literary agents and people I knew, and guess what? I networked, right? Kind of thing. There's the Inc. 5000, there's the S&P 500, there's the list of small jewels you can work for in Pella, Iowa that consult or whatever, wherever, whatever, do some research. There's things and videos and booklets I have out on the internets that you can grab for free that'll help you do this. But now you need to start labeling these companies. And if you've gone through the profiling and the avataring of the company, of the role, of the whatever, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to prioritize the company list that you're gonna generate. Now, most of the time I tell most of you, get the list down, don't edit it, just get lists. Get the list of, company down, or of companies down. But you're gonna be able to prioritize better if what? If you've, if you've done this and you've done this, right? You've thought about specifically what they look like. All right, and then what I want you to have is the about you speed rack. Okay, so this is, it's really, oops, sorry. It's really four things. And this I've taught you before in various places. And if you're in my job search coaching program, I'm sure you're loving me for this one. All right, you got the one second test. What do you do? I coach people. What do you do? I'm a career and leadership coach. I'm a leadership coach. I help people find jobs they love so they can lead a fulfilled life, right? Kind of thing. That's a one sentencer. <coughs> Excuse me. 
And then there's the one minuter. So I'm a career coach. I'm an international career coach. I help people find jobs. Over the last X number, 30 some odd years, I've been doing this and that and the other thing. I've helped more than 60,000 paying students in 158 countries do this and that. Right there's your one minuter, okay? And for all of these, sorry, all of these, I've given you videos on how to do this. This one seconder is should be something that's in the upper left of your career profile on your resume. It should be plain as day as what you do. You are not a seasoned person. You are not a seasoned executive. You are not a, what that tells me nothing. You are a senior project manager. You are a chief marketing officer. You are something like that, that in one second, I know what you do. And then the one sentence test is like your elevator pitch or how to describe yourself in a sentence. I've got a video out on that. And then this one minuter is how to introduce yourself. And I have a video on that, how to introduce yourself in an interview. And I teach you how to collect the information and the seven point formula that I give you that you should be able to say in 30 to 60 seconds. That's all it should take. And then if you're in my premium programs, if you're in either my leadership coaching program or my job search coaching program, I have this special session in those premium programs. It's only paid, but if, for those of you that are in those, the power of your personal story. How do you use, I'm not talking about your whole life story. I'm talking about episodes of your life that you share for the benefit of others and the benefit of connecting them to you and, and making, making it so that they identify with you, they trust you, they believe you, and you build rapport, but it ultimately is done to inspire others. I've shared with you bits of my personal story, right? I, I shared some of my story last week when we did the live show about how I found my last corporate job. I also shared in a separate video about what I did when, I, when my last boss gave me two options that I hated, that I turned myself into an, a, a, a person that immediately went in to become a business owner. I've given you different stories. Uh, I've talked about pits I've had and what I did in the pit to catapult out of it, right? I'm talking about that kind of stuff. I go through a very detailed methodology of how to do this, how to identify them. And if you are in those programs, you'll have that. But this is what I'm talking about. There's a speed rack here. I was diagnosed with cancer. I was, I found myself homeless. I like, there, it doesn't have to be extreme, but it, no great story ever started with, well, I got a scholarship to Harvard and it took off from there. No, there's other elements about where you struggled where other people are struggling, that you they will be inspired by your stories. That's what I'm talking about. You need these. The About You Speed Racks. That's number four. I hope I got my cards in order so that when I when I recap these dang things, bear with me here. Hang on. I'm uh, I'm I'm, I'm uh, I got I got these. Okay. All right. Now let's get on to the unique features. What makes you unique? All right. Now. Some of you right now are saying, well, Annie, I don't know, I'm 22 years old. Like, I just got out of college. You're unique, trust me. Somebody's like, tw I'm 25. I've been bouncing around. I've, I've had three different jobs in three years. You're unique, trust me. Here's what you need to think about. Okay, now when I think about my uniqueness, one of the first things that comes to mind is that I don't know that I've seen anybody out there on, on anywhere on, on the internet or TV or wherever that in what they do and what they teach, so my topics that I teach about, that they have the level of depth that I have, meaning the mileage, the years, and inside the mileage, I have all the cords. I've been a practitioner, I've consulted, I've seen hundreds of companies, thousands of people. I'm like, the, the level of depth of what I do and my ability to on command be able to help you in the middle of your game when the bullets are flying over your head and all of a sudden you need to think on your feet or you got to call an audible or whatever, I'll have the cord to play at that time. That's the depth. That doesn't mean that a 27-year-old person who's trying to be a career coach after five years in, in the professional life can't be helpful to somebody but if I'm going to try to connect with you, one of the unique features that I have is I do not see anybody who's got my experience. Now, I'm not saying I'm the most experienced person in the world because in addition to them having the depth, they need to be willing to show up every week at Thursday and share it with you or through their programs or all the people I meet with every month or the one-to-one -one coaching. So people that are very experienced aren't in the game. Well, not everybody who you compete with is interviewing for the job you're interviewing for. So the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to think in terms of depth. 
Do you know more? If you are the 26 year old who's been working at something for four straight years, when you go interview and they're looking for a junior associate or an up and coming up and comer to be a manager or whatever, if you've been working with it for four years, the likelihood that they're going to find somebody at your age, at your level, at, at your level of expertise is low. This becomes a unique feature because your depth is solid. If you're a college student and you don't have a lot of work experience, do you have a depth in certain skill sets that they're looking for? You've got to match this stuff up. So when I'm talking to you, I'm thinking in terms of what do they need to know to understand my special features as it relates to depth. Now, let's go, let's go, let's look at some other ways of, of coming up with special features. Do you have extras? So what I could say to you is, well, um, my extras are not only do I know how to coach you in finding a job and this and that and the other thing, but I've also been a whatever. So I talked to somebody last night, right, product development person. I was a product developer. The range I have. So I know how to sell. I know how to market. I know how to service. I know how to do. That's the extra skill sets. Are you the project manager who knows how to run a pro IT project through fruition, but can you also elevate yourself because you're an excellent facilitator and customer server? Or do you also understand how to build partnerships or work with partners to the software products that you might implement or integrate for your customers? These are the, then, be, then those start to add up to the extras. And, and all of those together, you're offering more. Now, what I don't want you to do is on your resume, try to stuff all the extras in because what also can happen is the reviewer can be confused and they don't truly know your bread and butter. And then you look like you're, you know, you're a puddle deep on a bunch of stuff. So I want you to think in terms of when I get to the interview, here's what I'm going to crush it with. And then the last one is the range. So you've got range. So going back to that, that IT project management example, I implement IT projects. I do it for CRM solutions or Salesforce automation solutions. Then the range comes in and I've done it for a financial services unit, a healthcare company, a software organization or whatever. So now the range at which I've been able to apply my level of depth at a solution or a market or a whatever is wide. When you got all of these, you're a legend. Right. So so I need you to think in terms of these this array of things. This will help you unlock your unique features. If you are not looking at all of these, you're not giving yourself the full deck of cards to play with. OK, so so I want you to think in terms of depth, extras and the range at which you can apply what you know. OK, and then and then you got to get the stories down. So when you get the stories down. The stories that you want to have down as your base, okay, it's like a speed rack of stories. This has to do with the problems that you identified. There's problem specific stories and then there's general qualifications. Okay, so the, the, the publisher, they want to know, well, Andy, what qualifies you specifically to address this problem in your book? So I, I had to identify why I know what I know and why I'm an authority to speak on it because I've done all this, okay, matched it exactly. If you are going back to that IT project management example, if you're the CRM person, okay, well, I've actually implemented CRM solutions on an international basis, in an enterprise basis, and so on. I've done that specifically. And so here's the bread and butter story I'm going to tell in the interview. Okay. But then there's general qualifications. The publisher also wanted to know, well, how are you going to look on TV? I'm, little, I'm not kidding you. How are you going to look on TV? Do you have any radio shows that we can listen to? Do you have whatever this and that, right? Where have you spoken? Let me see that. Like, I mean, like then they started to go into just base qualifications that they would want any author to be able to do to help promote the book or to help publicize the book. All right, well, for you, I've given you the general qualifications that I would be concentrating on. These are the, the magical six. You always want to have these down. Now, the problem is problem solving. Problem solving skills, not the major problem you solve, but in general, your problem solving and analytical ability. There's what are you passionate about, the value you're going to bring, 
How do you develop people? Doesn't matter if you have people that report to you or if you're the low man on the in, in, or low gal on the totem pole, right? But you influence people, you you communicate with people, you move them, right? How do you serve customers and the mistake? I don't want to go into too much on this because I already got a whole video out there on the internets on the YouTube channel for that. But your general stories and your general qualifications. So just to recap these for you, I want you to just think about this is kind of your table of contents. What are oops sorry? What are my what's my target market? What's my target market? Is it companies? Is it careers? Is it positions? What are the target problems that I solve and that I want in a company that focuses on those problems, challenges, aspirations, or whatever it is? And then what are the next iterations of problems that we're working toward, right? A, if you are in a startup and you are building a product, the first problem you have is to build the product. The next problem you have is to sell the product, right? Or maybe it's to get more money so that you can keep developing the product, but you're eventually gonna have to sell it. I initially had to put together an online training program. That was my first problem. But my next problem I was working toward is now I've got to sell it. Then when I start to sell it, I still have to market it more. Then I got to service it, that kind of stuff. That's what I want you to be thinking about. And then how do I, how do I find the companies? You know all about that. Make sure you have a speed rack of varying degrees. This is so important. This is what a lot of people are screwing up. I'm noticing this in my one-on-ones. It's taking a long time to get through. What do you do? If it takes me more than a second to understand in general what you do, that's a problem. You got to get it fixed. You're having a lack of clarity and a lack of clarity on you leads to two problems. You don't know where to look and you don't know when you get an opportunity, how to describe yourself it's very bad. Okay. Then what are my unique features? Depth, extras, and full range. How wide am I? And then make sure you have the stories in order. Now you're going to say, all right, Andy, I got all the desk work done. All right. Well, the kick out into, into what you do next is you go to market, you, you take your plan, and then you're going to go to market. I've given you how to do that in my job search challenge. There is a two video playlist on my channel, or there's like a seven module full blown job search challenge product in the premium for the premium folks. If you're in my job search coaching program, you have that as a bonus, or maybe you enrolled in that job search challenge on your own. But if you're not in any of those programs, I have a job search challenge playlist on my YouTube channel, and it will teach you how to start to pull together the companies, the people you want to target, and so on. But I want you to do them in the vein of this, of all the stuff that we talked about today, thinking through how you're going to market yourself. Cool? All right. I hope you love that. If you enjoyed that, smash the like button. Please, please share this because there's a lot of people who need help. This is going to live on in YouTube land forever. And so if you're here with me live, we're going to the Q&A. If you're watching this on the recording, I'll see you next week. But if you are here with me live, I've got a few announcements. And one of them is how you might be able to get the job search challenge or any of the other $300 programs we have. Who who enjoyed that? If you enjoyed that, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. It hurts me when you don't get my my uh my stuff every week. Mm. Let me see. Well, I don't even know who's in the house, but I I love to see all y'all. I know I I wished Henry and Michael and some of you others, Gilles, oh, Karen, nice to see you. Jana, Beth, Ta Beth, I hope you're safe. Um, you're currently in Atlanta. Okay, good. Tom Phillips. Rob Peterson, what's up, Brian Keller? B. Bradley. I don't know what the first name. Maybe that's Bill Bradley, Bob Bradley. David Leonard Capelli, love it. All right, so here's the deal for today. Uh, we, I really been on my podcast kick, and we've been putting out uh, Tuesday and Friday. We've, I've been putting putting uh, podcasts out on Apple and, and everywhere else, Google and iHeartRadio and Player FM and Stitcher and you name it. And uh, Tuesday and Friday. And what I noticed is it really helps my rankings. Thank you, Bulgaria, for keeping me at the top and Romania too. Uh, if people are reviewing the podcast. So I thought, you know, I was, I was meditating this morning. I'm like, you know, I need to give some more stuff away. And although I pride myself on being the most generous coach out there, but you can always give more. So here's the offer for today. It's good until midnight, and here's all you need to do. 
and and this is this is it's really good. So I don't know if you follow me on Apple iTunes, the Tips for Work and Life podcast. That's the name of the podcast. It's that name on, on all the platforms. And I have some reviews out there. But if you're willing to go and look at what's out there, maybe you've heard some of it before. Maybe some of it's cross-referenced on YouTube. Some of it isn't. And if you put a review out, you just put an honest review. You don't have to. You don't have to give me five stars if you don't think it's a five star review. But just put a review. That's all. That's all I'm asking. You put a review, and you take a shot, screenshot from your phone or whatever, and you send it to. Oh man, I should have written this out. Support at milewalk.com. So wait, just so it's plain, it plain as day. Support at milewalk.com, and if you if you do that by midnight tonight. I support it, milewalk.com, support it, milewalk.com. I need a better marker. I will give you your pick of any $300 course. If you are wondering what those options are, you can have interview courses, you can have the job search challenge, you get the job search mini camp, or you get my resume writing workshop. They're all, they're $299 or $297. So you can have that, that's free. No, no strings attached. I just want you to go and put an honest review out there. Or, or if you would like to get into my job search coaching program, we're running a special, actually, we'll probably just start it today. We weren't going to start it till Tuesday, but now I'm in such a jovial mood. Uh, it's, it's normally $9.97, and when we put it on special, we usually knock $200 off, which drops it to $7.97. But if you want to take your chit from today, from reviewing the podcast, preferably on Apple, uh, I'll give you an extra hundred. See, so for six ninety seven, you could come into uh, the job search coaching program. So those are your options. So all I'm asking, all I'm asking, is for you to go out on your phone or on your computer, listen to the podcast. Maybe I'd love it if you, you know, subscribe to it. Uh, but if not, that's okay. But put a put a review out. They really they really help, and it really helps Apple and the other platforms. Uh, raise awareness for the podcast. And so I would really appreciate that. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, Andy, I, I'm already in your boot camp. If you're already in the boot camp and you're not in my leadership program, I'll give you a few months of the leadership program free. If you're in the leadership program already and you're in the boot camp, I mean, I'm running out of things to give you. Uh, maybe do it out of the kindness of your heart. Or if you don't want to take the time, I understand perfectly. But uh, if you have any questions, support at malwalk.com. But I don't want to make this overly hard. All I'm asking you is to go and review the podcast and take a screenshot and send it to me. And then go to the Milewalk Academy website. Maybe Kara can and Kara can add the Milewalk Academy website. And there's four programs you can choose from that basically cover the job search. Or you can use an extra hundred off at a big program. And if you got any questions, if I'm confusing the hell out of you, just let me know. All right, you got until midnight tonight. That email needs to be in the support at milewalk.com box by midnight tonight. Support at milewalk. <laughs> All right, wait, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I do have a LinkedIn newsletter uh, that goes out a couple times a week now. If you want to get that in your feed, uh, maybe we can put that link in. I've got a special video coming out on Tuesday, this coming up Tuesday. It is about showing your value to employers. It's really good. It will take what we just did today, and I'm building on that. It's about a half an hour. It's awesome. And then I've got some extra special um, emails Wednesday and Thursday with some case studies and other things. And on Thursday, next Thursday, uh, we are, I, I need to steal the live office hours, sorry, slot uh, for my job search coaching program members. My boot campers and I are going to be meeting uh, on Thursday. My apologies for some of the scheduling mix up. I just, my mother-in-law just died and we're, it's been an absolute uh, rough, rough month. This Saturday we're hosting here uh, the service. I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot going on in the La Civita house. And so send my mother-in-law some prayers. And then Friday the 14th, uh, I'm meeting with my leadership group on collaboration. It's really good. We're, we're talking about how to collaborate and how you can control uh, the, collab the collaboration. And then let's see, the week of the 17th to 18th, we're doing some resume stuff. 
and the week of October 31st to November, whatever that is, uh, November 4th, is a new job search challenge that we are going to run, which is going to be pretty epic. Uh, that's free. It'll be on the YouTube channel. You're going to love it. So all you got to do is go out to Apple. Tell Apple how much you, you enjoy listening to the Tips of Work and Life podcast. You can pick up a bunch of stuff. You can come to the resume stuff. You can come to the job search and stuff. And and it's 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 really it's really fun. I'm, I I just I really appreciate y'all, and uh, I want to do what I can to help you. All right, uh, Kara is telling me, uh, Case, thank you, Andy, for helping me revamp my resume and land an out of state job. I appreciate your videos so much, Case. You are welcome. I'm absolutely thrilled to help and I I just I I just I believe me I know y'all are out there I appreciate uh when you when you give me that feedback and you let me know that I've helped you in some small way I have total faith that we met for a reason I pray on it every day I love to hear it I believe me it never gets old it never never gets old ever all right let's get some questions answered how we doing care what uh, I'm gonna should I I see Henry Villa Fuerte. Uh, noted, sir, I'm reviewing for my first interview, but I did not pass my resume because I want to be ready first. I'm 32 years old, and I'm also so nervous, even though I'm merely practicing. Henry, you got this, man. I don't know if Henry was first. Henry's the first one that I see. Uh, let me see. Is there anybody above Henry? I see, I see Michael T. Love that guy. Michael T., what's up? Hang in there. Fox, Fox, Deborah. How are you? Henry was first. Excellent. Kurt, what's up, buddy? From, I believe, Chicago. Oh, you are. Yeah. Baby girl, how you doing, my Canadian friend? Donna Morley, another another Canadian boot camper and leader. Beautiful. Michael Moore, how are you? Stephen Green, what's up? Gilles and Karen with a bunch of hearts. Hey from England, Karen. Super excited for the session. Thank you for your awesome content and always putting us first when you create these videos and wholesome content. I love that you said that because every morning, I know I've shared some of my routines with y'all and I'm, I'm, always, I'm an open book. I'd be happy to share all that stuff. But I concentrate, literally concentrate on staying focused, on making sure that I'm doing this for you first. You do that first, then the stuff that happens second happens better. It happens easier. If you do it in the reverse order, bad stuff happens, and it takes a lot longer. Jana, I'm sending you prayers. I know you're on the west side, and uh, Wendy, I'm sure, West Palm Beach. I guess that's, I guess that's technically on the, is it more east side, even though it's West Palm Beach? But, uh, and no matter what, Florida, so let's send prayers to Jana and, and Beth, our beloved Floridians, who is now in Atlanta. Jana, hopefully you're somewhere else. Tom Phillips, you're in Seattle, so I'm guessing you're pretty safe. All right, Rob Peterson, hi, how do? Brian B. Bradley, what's up? Internal interview, sending you good luck. David Leonard Capelli, good luck to you too. Kiyomo, Kioma, how are you? Good to see you. Matt Williams, new boot camper. Artist in Wisconsin. And we're not going to get into the Bears Packers thing. We've been taking our lumping for a long time. Lucky Miles from Uganda. Do we have any speed? Wait, wonderful to hear from you. By the way, you know, I, you heard my Bulgarian thing and Romanian thing. They got me at, like to the number one spot, which is like totally awesome. If we have any Bulgarians here, would you raise your hand and let me know so I can personally thank you? Liz, Deb, Panda, can't thank you enough. I've been listening to videos for the last two weeks and preparing to meet with a potential new employer. Lots of luck to you. Calvin, what's up? Hopefully you, newbie, you are, I hope you are safe as well. Zumba with Mr. Pur Mr. Purple. I think I got your, 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 your comment in the system in the leadership program. Awesome, Tanya. Awesome, okay, Kara's just, just uh, sending me stuff. MTO, what's up, Tanya Arnold? Is there any... Hey, boot camp, do you know what time it is? All right, wait, you guys, hey, 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 questions. You got any question marks here? Ernie, what's up, buddy? Adam Stark, can always count on you. Um, wait, so hold on, hang on, Adam. Fan of Andy, I'm on your podcast page. How do I post a review? So I think if, you, if you're on my podcast page 
on the Mile Walk Academy where I just show you the different podcast platforms, just click your favorite. Hopefully it's Apple because Apple has the lion's share of podcast listeners. Uh, so that's why I prefer that one, but makes no difference. And uh, then, you know, when you open, when you open the, um, so, you know, I'm, I'm just opening this just to double check to make sure that I'm not, uh, that I'm not uh, doing anything uh, wrong here. But there is, uh, there's an opportunity in the, um, let's see, uh, right, go to show. You go to the show, and there should be an opportunity to, uh, to, to, to rate it. And so just click on the main thumbnail, and I'd search around. There probably is things like with stars and stuff, and it'll ask you if you want to add a comment. I'm not super great with this, but uh, if you just hit the show, and there's a thing here, because I think I've already rated my own show, but you can, there's a, a thing probably under the little description that gives you a chance to do that. All right. Adam Stark, where were we? If I stated work times and days, it, oh, if stated work times and days aren't ideal, do you negotiate the same as you do for salary? I also, how to respond if they tell you the, the salary with if they tell you the salary with the offer, do you, do you go, okay. So a couple of things, hold on, a couple of things. If, if the dates that are stated, if they say you work um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's your five days, let's say, because it's not, if it's Monday through Friday or whatever, the question isn't, you know, do I negotiate or don't negotiate? First thing is determine if there's any flexibility. Like, do you do something where, like, if you're a wedding coordinator and you can't work Saturday, that's a deal breaker. So, and you're in events, I believe, right? So, if you're talking about a swing schedule where you're you're working at the times where most people might not be, if it if it's if it's vital to your performance in the position, then I wouldn't consider the job. So, it, if 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 it's hey, Adam, we all work Monday through Friday. But, and everybody takes a day, or we work Monday through Saturday, and we rotate days of the week off every other whatever, and, and now you're looking at, well, I don't want Tuesday, can I take Thursday, or something like that. If, if there's some kind of protocol that you can put in place where you, you move that date that doesn't disrupt your ability to do the job, then yes, I would negotiate. So in the former, I would not. In the latter, I would. And then uh, how to respond when they tell you the salary with the offer. They should tell you the salary with the offer. I've answered all of that in the salary negotiation videos. And you, I believe, have uh, one of the mini camps. And I, I want to say you might have the 2021 version, in which case there's a salary negotiation case study there for you. And I would do it that way. All right. Jacqueline, Justy, how you doing? Roy, Ingrid, how do? Thank you for those congratulations. Uh, actually, I'm waiting for the acquisitions editor to get back to me. He's got to pitch it this week to his to his powers that be. He's got to sell it within his company. Then they got to sell it to this. How about this? I sell it to somebody who then has to sell it to people in his company. The people in his company have to go and sell my book to the bookstores and to the to the Amazons and the Barnes and Nobles and all of them. And they don't want to sell books that the bookstores give back. So uh, you know, it's a lot going on. <laughs> Uh, Tom, Sandy, David, Steve, have a plan. Follow a plan. You bet. All right, Kara, give me some guidance here. Where? Am Marty. Andy, I accepted a job offer. I'm, I'm hoping this is good news. How to be honest at the exit. In, okay, first thing, can we all give Marty congratulations? Okay, Marty. Uh, how to be honest at the exit interview without being negative. Marty and anybody else. Exit interviews, like resignations, I want you to just be nice and kind and there's absolutely, absolutely no reason, zero, to give any negative feedback to your company. Why would you ever do that? There's absolutely no upside, right? What are the downsides? A lot of people left companies, they wanted to go back, right? Okay, you're going to kill that. Or it's going to get around, Marty left because he wasn't happy about. 
Then some people that, right, are not on HR, not in recruitment, not wherever, they go off and they work somewhere else and Marty wants to go there three years from now. And they say, well, that Marty guy, man, on his exit interview, he was such a jerk. Just don't do that. In resignation, I have a, a beautiful resignation video on my YouTube channel about eight steps on how to quit your job the right way. And one of the things I say is just be pleasant, write, ha write the thing, write the resignation letter. I give you the free template and then, you know, give them a, a couple of weeks notice or whatever's appropriate for where you live or what your culture is or what your employment agreement says. And I get a lot of comments about, well, I don't owe them anything. I'm going to drop and run. They weren't nice to me. So you don't resign for them. You resign for you. And because that lives with you forever. Because every reference check that goes back to your company to see if you work there, if somebody's doing this live and not using a system, which is a pretty good po probability, then they can say, Marty dropped and ran, didn't even give us any time. Do you want to hire somebody like that? Kind of thing, right? So, so, so in the exit interview, I wouldn't give them anything. I would say, I'm leaving. It's a better opportunity. There's nothing wrong here. I'm going because it provides me something that I've really wanted. Or you can say something if you prefer to be verbose. You can pick something that your current company can do nothing about. I really want international experience and we're only a domestic company kind of thing. Something like that. I don't. I, the less you give, the better. Less you give, the better. Liz, the universe is listening. All right. Oberheard. Is that, is that MTO? <laughs> TV people tell me to pitch. Wait. Pitch first for movie. TV content, get traction with my stories, then pitch a book. Need help with pitch, like job search. Clear, simple story with protagonist meets obstacles and seeking solutions. Okay, wait, what, what are you asking me? Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna, I wouldn't try to pitch my story with that few words. It's okay, like when I turn on the Comcast cable or the Netflix and they've got, Something simple like, you know, mother finds ex-boyfriend, then murder occurs, and so on, whatever. Like, I get it when it's, like, on Netflix and it's already there. But I don't, I don't know any, anything about how to pitch that stuff. Megan Wisdom, how are you? Or wait, has anybody actually done the review already? That I would love to know. Um, actually, interestingly, so Tom Phillips, you, you, y'all don't know this. Um, wait, hang on. And Rainier, I'll, I'll come back to you. I think I might have missed. And Tom Phillips says, and you give your most popular book away for free where no one makes any money. Uh, here's a little known fact that will probably shock you. Ever since I wrote the book and the first one came out in 2012 and I would get royalty checks. Okay. I get royalty checks every quarter and have been ever since for the last 10 years, over 10. And the royalty checks were like this, right? This, some people buy the book. I didn't do any marketing. and anything. The minute I started giving the book away, my royalty checks are 10 times what they used to be. So I give the book away, right? And so, and you, you're not counting how many people are buying courses and boot camps and leadership programs and other things as a result of, as a result of my gift, so, uh, you know, there's, there's a marketing element to it. It costs me a lot of money to get the book somewhere. And it costs a lot more than you kick in. But it's also an investment on my part in building my community, offering value to the world. And then some people get in my courses. All right. Uh, Reiner, MD. Greetings from Paraguay. Thank you for showing up. Any suggestion when applying, getting interviewed by a company which may have a good work environment, but the public do, does not like it that much as it's not top tier? Excuse me. I, I am about investigating for myself. I have more faith in my ability to evaluate than I do in hearsay, gossip, you know, website reviews, other things that are out there. Now, if it's not a top tier, and you know it's not a top tier because they're not a leader, okay? Let's say, I don't know, we're talking about Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, and all this. Okay, so when you look at that in terms of like, um, is it a top tier, is it a whatever? Now, I only use this example because we're on the podcast kick here for a second. So first off, 
That's not all those companies do. That's a segment of what the companies do. Google in Google Podcasts trails Apple by a tremendous margin, except that this is not their bread and butter. Apple sells products and Google's search engine machine. Marketing makes all the dollars from that. Right, okay, so now it's not a top tier, but or it's, maybe it's one of these, but look at the company holistically. Are you joining an arm that's the strategic part of the company? If they're not a top tier and they only make one product and they only compete with companies who make one product, which is very rare in this world, then I would be investigating where are you in the market or based on my research, it appears as though you're third. Do you have aspirations to be first? If so, how are we going to get there? How are we going to do that? What's our strategy? What's our plan? How do I fit in? Or here's how I can help or whatever it is. So I'm about investigating all that and I'm about really dialing up my questions to make sure that I'm getting the answers I need to make a good decision for me. And, and there's a lot more to it than is it a top tier company. There's a lot of second and third and fifth tier, tier companies I'd go work for, right? And, and then the other thing is, I feel like I can make you a, a top tier company. That's why you're hiring me. So think about all that stuff. Hi, Rita, and Ian, and Steven, and Zumba with Mr. Per Gilles, my boot camper, what's up? Andy had an interview this week, love it. Went well, love it. Offer to continue, but for one role. Uh, offer to continue, but for, oh, but for other role. Next week, interview with potential peers. I'm decades older, any tips to ease acceptance? Okay, so it isn't about the age so much uh, as it is, uh, the connection you make and what has your age produced or your experience, I mean, that they don't have that they can use and how can you help them? Now, I don't know how much experience, just because you're older doesn't mean you have a lot more experience. It, I could be older, but only, you know, only have this much experience where a 27 year old who's got five years of experience is gonna have more experience in doing what I'm interviewing for. So I'm gonna give you different counsel depending on what the situation is. So they obviously like you for the company and if they didn't if they didn't pick you to go into the role you initially interviewed for but they picked you for another one, that's a good sign. Okay, that is a good sign because if I didn't like you or didn't think you were a cultural fit or didn't think you fit my company, out you'd go. So now what I would say is I would be focused on uh, just making sure that you understand how it is that you can, you can use your experience getting out early in the interview, how what you have differs from what they have and aligns to what they need. So you're going to have to figure out, maybe you ask the recruiter, what it, you know, what is it that the team needs most and what is it that the team needs most to hear from me to know that I satisfy that? And then it's also a combination of what you can do from an experience level and how they will benefit. So when you go into an interview, you generally go into an interview interviewing with either uh, superiors, peers, or, or staff or subordinates or whatever you want to call them. And then at each angle of this, you want to make sure that what you're saying aligns to how that person will benefit, the superior. How will I help you build your team? How will I alleviate some of your duties so you can do something more strategic and you can give me the mundane stuff? I'm going to free up your time. Peers, how can we cross-train? How can we learn together? How can I pick up the, sl the slack or the extra that you're unable to get to? Or how can I teach you what I know? How do we learn from each other? For to, the, to the staff, how is it that I can help you grow? How, what is it that you're looking for in the way of opportunities and so on. Now you're getting into a situation where maybe you're interviewing with peers and they're, they're younger than you are, but you can still use the bottom two that I just mentioned and, and getting them to care about you because, because hiring you would benefit them, right? So you're looking for how can I help the team and how can I help you grow? And some of that you're gonna have to triangulate early in the interview by asking questions or before you get to the interview by asking the recruiter. So I would look for that, or I would look to do that. All right, Jana, what if you're more than one thing titled, I'm a project manager and I'm a web developer? Pick one. And I'm a content strategist, pick one. Do you have any, uh, do you have to choose? So here's, here's what happens. If you put on your resume, 
project manager, web developer, content stream. I am so confused. Which one you do? Is it 33, 33, 33? Um, even though if it's 33, 33, 33, I have to ask all kinds of questions about, is that your bread and butter? Well, wait, hang on. Just because you do more of that, are you only doing more of that because your, your, your organization is lacking in bodies to do that? Why do you have three titles? But like, I'm going to have to ask 20 minutes worth of questions to figure that out. That's if you get the interview. So, so what, you, what I would recommend, pick one of the titles. Pick the title you want the most, meaning it's a marketing document, right? Not a work history document. And pick one of those three, call it project manager, call it web developer, or call it content strategist, wherever you're going. And what you can say is, in your, if you go to the Andy Lasavita School of Resume Writing, you know that underneath the title goes a description. In that description, you say, um, project manager responsible for whatever, this is a description, this is not the bullets. This is a, a housekeeping paragraph that where you're going to tell the reviewer, the reader, the recruiter, the hiring official, the who, interviewer, whoever, what it is that you do in general. And inside there, I would bury the other two. Additional responsibilities include web development and content strategy. And then you can get into how much of that you want. I don't really care because I'm going to be hiring you for a project manager or I'm going to be hiring you for a content strategist then you have to look at the rest of your resume how does the rest of the resume look does it say content a digital content marketer project manager and you want to be in a project manager role fine but it's going to look weird if if you if you're if you're skipping around now without seeing your whole resume it's very difficult for me to tell you exactly how i would set it up but to answer your question i would pick one for where you want to go. And if you say to me, because you might, Andy, well, I like project management and I like web development. Then what I would say is pick one, go spend your whatever job searching time, 80% go after the one you want. 20% go after the secondary one kind of thing. Because believe me, you know the expression, right? Where your attention goes, energy flows, your outcomes will be in alignment with the effort you kick in. So, uh, so I hope that helps. I really, man, I'd love to look at that resume. All right, let's see. All right, wait. So I want just time check because we got a few more, few more uh, things here. If you got any questions about the gift today, in the inbox at support at malawak.com by, I don't know, by midnight tonight. It's a $300 course. If you're not sure where to find it, milewalkacademy.com. It's the, the four of them that are about 300 bucks. The interview course, the resume course, the job search challenge, or the job search mini camp, and and or you can apply a uh, hundred dollars extra to get the job search coaching program. That's the blue card. And if you got any questions, support at Malwalk.com. I hope I didn't make this too hard, but just put a podcast review out there, and I give you I give you good gifts. B Bradley two eighty. I'd like to know how or what I can say in a job interview that can make the comparison from being a warehouse supervisor to a purchase coordinator, seeing how I don't have a purchasing background. Uh, so if you don't have a purchasing background, then when you, when you target companies, if you're making wholesale changes in functions, all right, so you've got warehouse experience, right? inventory management and other things of that nature and somebody else is probably doing the purchasing you can do one of a couple things you're going to try to network your way in and say i'm making a shift to purchasing and somebody's going to have to help you get into an organization and vouch for you or at least get you to the right person and when they interview you they should know that you don't have a lot of purchasing experience because it'll be plain as day on your resume. So if you actually are sitting across from me, I would say something to you probably like, I see you've got experience primarily in warehousing and man warehouse management. And so you probably didn't know this, but I am APIC certified a thousand years ago. Uh, but I would like to know, we do have a purchasing position. You know, what kind of exposure do you have to purchasing? Do you interact with the purchaser? Do you inventory manage, meet with the purchaser each week to show them where the inventories are low, what you need, reordering, this and that? Do you, do you, you know, they build relationships with vendors? Do you have any relationship management experience? Like I would start picking away, not in a mean way, but like I would start trying to gauge 
what exposure you have. So for you, I would start lining that up is how what I've done, how is it that that applies to what it is that I, I want to do? So that's, so when you are in, when you're in an interview, you also have to recognize that if you are in fact in the interview, they should recognize that you don't have a lot of that experience already. So I don't think that they would expect that you would have loads of purchasing experience. But I do think that there's gotta be some relationship that you draw between what you do and how what skill set you've built applies to your ability to be a purchasing coordinator. So we did this with one woman, Emily. This is a fantastic story where she was selling speech services. So basically she was like marketing speakers to organizations for events and whatever. She'd also done some work in fashion and some work in the art. And we triangulated her rather eclectic background and we siphoned out, I worked with her to figure this out. And in the first session, I was able to see based on her history and I asked her questions. What do you like? What do you not want to do? What did you hate about that job? This and that. I took all of that. We siphoned it out and bang, I gave her some ideas of what to look for. One of the first things off the top of my head was, well, it sounds like you like working with people. You don't want to sell. You like organization. You, 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 you like this kind of, of industry line, this, that, and the other thing. You should be a buyer. I've never been a buyer before. I know, but it sounds like that buyer needs those skills. I bet if you target these kind of companies, you will be able to become a buyer. She's a buyer for Cirque du Soleil, first shot. So, you know, there's ways of, of peeling out what are, the, what are the capabilities that you need that you can say, well, as a warehouse manager, I've learned all these things. And then you got to map it and, and market yourself along those capabilities so that when you say, now, and, and then, and then from, a, from a job seeking standpoint and bringing yourself to market, you're gonna have to lean more heavily on your network to get you to people. And because if you put your resume into an applicant trashing system, you're never gonna get through because you don't have the experience. And, and the ATS is gonna block it because you don't have enough of a match. So these are some nuances that, that, that are not insurmountable uh, but you need to be a bit clever about how to pull that out. And then if you get in front of them, you better be ready. Okay, Cathal, happy to, oh, happy to have you. SB, roll into another meeting, see you later. Ian, used this, oh, I used to implement CRM system and help a thousand companies successfully do so. I love it. Wonderful, braggable point. Uh, you guys are all in. Nancy Huff, what's up? All right. Beth, so awesome. Great way to think about this. Okay, so we must be back at when I was given the talk. Jay Cameron, how you doing, Jade? Let's see. I'm zipping on by. Kara, help me. Where am I? Case, you're welcome. Liz, you're welcome. Thank you. Moving forward. It was rough. My mother-in-law, that was rough. It's still going on. I mean, this whole process. Thank you all for that. Annette, you are the best motivational coach. Thank you. Thanks so much for your good positive vibes. Hey, Harley. Harley lost his cone. He's, he's back to normal. <laughs> Michael Tierney, if you need the leadership stuff, give me a review, damn it. We'll get you in there. Andre, Google Podcasts, okay? Just get out there. Send some love out into the universe. I don't really care where it goes. Yeah, Apple's nice because that's where the largest population is of listeners. But hey, man, whatever you, whatever you can do. All right, Jacqueline Youssef, thank you for what you do each day. You are welcome. Interviewing tomorrow, lots of luck. I have had some recent internal interviews that included question like, what is your most used app and who would you take to dinner? I don't love these. I really don't. My most used app. Well, YouTube Studio is my most YouTube most used app because I that's what I do for my job. Your, yours might be email, right? And how about take me to dinner? <laughs> how about that? Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Jacqueline. Your thoughts on such interview? I think it's, I think, um, honestly, I mean, I, this has nothing to do with you. I think those are wasted questions. You're wasting time. 
because I need to be evaluating how you run your projects, how you solve problems, how you do this, how you would do that. It needs to be forward thinking the interview and it needs to be as simulated into my environment as possible. That's what I think. I know that doesn't do you any good, but that's, I would just answer the questions. Word Dog Toronto. I had a job created for me that was a dream job in that I got to do a bit of everything. In terms of job search, I need to target specifics, how to decide. That is a you decide that based on your desires and what you want. And you look at, well, what can I do? What gives me the best chance? Now, let, this is a great question because let me answer it this way. I always want you to put your happiness as the highest criteria. What do I love to do and what do I enjoy most? And if, if it's, a, well, Andy, I can't chase my passion right now because I need to put food on the table. No problem. Of what you've done, what do you love to do the most? When In Emily's case, when we were talking about that, she didn't want to sell. That's what she was doing. She liked organizing and integrating and facilitating and so on. All right, well, we got something that we could focus on, what she loved, and then you have to figure out, well, how do I apply my skill set to sell myself into that? And then, and then here's the other thing. Let's just say sake of argument that you, and, and this isn't exactly like, I was talking to Ernie last night and Ernie want, is making a bit of a shift. But let me, let me just kind of mumble up a, an example using some of his terminology because I think it applies. If, if, you're, if, if your goal is, you know, I'm a facilities operator and I'm interested in property management kind of like Ernie was, it, what I would say is if, if, if if you're struggling to get a job and you need a job, then what you do is you become a facilities manager in a property management company so that you get in, you take a step toward what you love. Okay, now what Ernie did is, Ernie made me really proud because he did a lot of other things that I really loved by going and getting certified, getting rubbing elbows and networking with the right kind of people and so he did other things. But I'm just saying, if you say, well, I can't, it doesn't, everything in life does not have to be one step and done. How many steps is it going to take you? But what's the next best step to get to where you want to go? Like, I can't publish the book tomorrow. I have to get somebody to help me to get in this. So they pay me to do whatever and it, all that other good stuff. Well, I can only do one thing at a time, right? So what's my next step to get to where I want to go kind of thing? Great one. Great one. All right. Let me see. Folks, it's 1217. I got to get running. But to be clear on my little, my little gift today. All you got to do is go to, and I would prefer Apple, all you got to do is go review it, take a screenshot of it, of what you wrote or whatever that you put it out there. Um, and I think you need to put some text, like you rate it with the stars, you put some text, and then just take a picture, email it to support, and say, hey, I looked at your list, I want this I want this program, or I'm, I have this, what would you recommend, or what? any of that. We'll be happy to work with you. And, and if you want to get into the job search coaching program and join me next Thursday for the premium session where I'm teaching some stuff and doing some Q&A, uh, I'll give you an extra 100 off the 200. So meaning meaning you can have 300 off for 697 you can get in the interactive package. Okay, folks, I really appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope everybody has a great Friday. I got another podcast coming out tomorrow about empathy. And, uh, and have a great weekend, and I will see you in your inbox tomorrow morning. And Tuesday, I got a great video on the YouTube channel. Hope you're subscribed. And make sure to share this. People need help. All right, you guys, you guys be great. Love this. Love this. Love spending time with you.